Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, today we have David Klon and he's going to talk about his Rivendell automation software. So with that, I will turn it over to you, David. Thanks, Stephanie. It's good to see you all here. Uh, first of all, it's not my Rivendell. Rivendell is oh. uh, it's an open source <laughs> package. I contribute okay. to the, the source code, but so do many other people. Um, oh, and, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I did not write this. Um, <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> anyway, okay. um, what what well, I will just give you credit for it. Yeah, okay. thanks. I, I wear several hats in the Pacifica and community radio sphere. Um, I'm a, sort of a, a, a helper, a tech support person with Pacifica. I work with Stephanie and I work with Otis and Ursula and Ruth to help stations with the internet technology package. Um, which includes streaming and archiving and schedule management and stuff like that. So the folks, you folks at KCIW, uh, I've worked with you, uh, Greg, I've worked with Chad at KKFI, uh, worked with a bunch of the stations with that hat on. With my other hat on, I'm an independent consultant and I, um, I help people with, I help radio stations with general IT sorts of things, networking and I have grown to sort of specialize in the Rivendell radio automation system. I also keep a radio automation comparison spreadsheet, um, and I'll post the link in the chat for that uh, a little bit later. Um, it's very common for people to say, eh, which automation system should I use? Which one is the best? And um, th the answer is there's no best radio automation system. There's one that works for you and your station. Um, and I've, I've uh, worked with uh, several radio automation systems. And in fact, a few weeks ago, Davine gave a presentation on Station Playlist, which is a really good one, a really good automation system. Um, and I'm going to present today on uh, another one that I think is really good, which is Rivendell. Um, so I have a little presentation that I've prepared, but I encourage you all to interrupt me with questions either in the chat or just raise your hand or just wave around and say, hey, 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 stop, I have a question. So um, yeah, feel free to interrupt my little presentation anytime. Uh, I'm, do I have share screen capability? Yeah, great. Uh, yes, sir, you do. Thanks. I'm gonna share my thing here. Do you see, um, when it comes up, do you see an intro to radio automation with Rivendell? Mm -hmm. Yes, there it is. Cool. Awesome. All right. Um, so what I am going to talk about specifically is Rivendell. And keep in mind, for you folks that have already uh, started going down the Rivendell path, keep in mind that this is really a 10,000 foot view. I'm going to go through some of the modules and I'm going to go really fast. And if you want to talk about specifics, we can, you know, talk offline about uh, specifically how things might work in your situation. So uh, please be patient with my 10,000 foot overview. And again, interrupt with questions anytime. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is define radio automation. To me, radio automation is more than just something like iTunes or uh, Winamp, you know, where you just load up a playlist and hit go and, and let it go, or, you know, whatever your, you know, M, uh, VLC or Windows Media Player. Um, what I talk about with regard to radio automation is um, uh, something that has uh, a digital library manager with what I call advanced metadata, the ability to track more than just, you know, MP3 tags like title, artist, album, stuff like that. For example, record label. Um, radio stations need to keep track of more details because they're not just consumer, uh, they're not just, you know, consumers of audio. They are actually providers of audio. A radio automation system also has what I'm going to call a playlist manager. Um, some radio automation systems call these logs. Playlists and logs are somewhat synonymous. And so if, you'll, if you hear me talk about one, you can think of it as uh, the other. So playlists or logs. Um, a radio automation system has an automatic 
audio scheduler that is rule based. That is, you can choose your audio. Sometimes you want to choose music and you want to just grab something out of a pile, but you want it to be, you want to apply some rules to that. So, for example, you don't want to play two down tempo songs in a row, or you don't want to play, um, you know, two rock, you know, hard rocking things in a row, or maybe you do and you want to, you know, you have some. Uh, you have some rules that you want to follow for choosing music. Um, you also have some set programs that you want to play. Maybe you have audio port programs that you want to play at specific times um, in your in your broadcast week. And so you have uh, an audio scheduler that is able to accommodate all these different requirements. Another important concept or another important part of an automation system is something that can control your audio chain. That is something that can switch things on and off, um, you know, where some stations are, are using satellites for content delivery and you want your automation system to switch over to the satellite when it's time to do that. Um, when I talk about audio chain controlling, um, I, I think of it in in Two, uh, two styles, that is time-based switching of your audio chain and also event-based. In other words, responding to external events. If something happens, do this, or at a certain time, do that. So uh, controlling your audio chain. Another key, key facet is um, some kind of task scheduling. This goes back to the time-based uh, event controller or, or switcher. Um, you want something that can do things at a certain time. And last but certainly not least, you need a report manager so that um, you can get information out of your automation system. Automation systems are chock full of of information about your station. And you need to be able to get that information out, whether it's you know, what played at a specific time, you wanna do proof of performance for uh, your underwriting, or you just wanna know what's in your library. Um, so have, having the ability to get information out of your system is crucial and it's part of an automation system. So how does Rivendell do this? Rivendell, uh, is a good old fashioned desktop application, or more specifically, it's a suite of applications. So you have the ones listed here, these six, this is just a, an example, these six applications, admin, library, log manager, log edit, airplay, um, and RD catch, those are standalone desktop applications with graphical interfaces and you do pointing and clicking and typing and, uh, off you go. There are also, because it's based, uh, it, it runs on the Linux operating system. It doesn't run on Windows or Mac OS. It runs on Linux. Um, there are um, what are called command line applications. These are terminal applications where you type a command, hit enter, and the command does something instead of pointing and clicking. Um, these are useful for uh, automating tasks in batch and doing things, um, uh, you know, running a script is, is what it's often called. So um, these are sort of the, the key um, applications that comprise a Rivendell system. There are more. Um, I can go into specific details if you want, but um, that's basically how Rivendell does it. The other major part of Rivendell is the backend database. The database uh, with Rivendell is tightly integrated. In fact, it's it's a core part of, of what Rivendell is. And um, it's where all the information is stored. Rivendell stores everything. Um, what time you want to play a specific song, which songs you have, which uh, pre-recorded shows you have. All that stuff is stored in the database. The only thing that's not in the database is the actual audio itself. The audio files are, you know, kind of like any other system. It's just a file in, in the, the file system. Um, and then the other piece uh, that is important to Rivendell is the audio chain control. The photo that I have there is a broadcast tools switcher 
which is a thing that can switch your audio chain from uh, input A to input B or C or D or whatever. You have, Maybe you have multiple studios. You want to switch one on the air at one time and switch the other one on the air at some other time. Uh, you can use your Rivendell system uh, or any um, competent automation system to control your switchers. So let's take a look at some of the actual uh, apps. What I'm going to do is show some screenshots of uh, the actual uh, Rivendell applications and just talk through those. And I'm going to kind of speed through this quickly because I don't want to bore the tears out of you with, uh, with these details, especially if you have never used Rivendell. This can be a little bit uh, confusing or overwhelming. And the first thing I'll say about the Rivendell applications is that they were coded, uh, the, the principal author of the, so the software is a man based in um, Virginia. His name is Fred Gleason. And he wrote it with the expectation that you're going to you're going to run these applications on a computer that has a touch screen attached to it. And so you'll see a lot of uh, these Rivendell apps with these buttons instead of, you know, instead of um, I don't know, instead of links to click like, like a, a web application or something like that. These buttons are large enough that a finger can, you know, touch one on a screen. Um, and, you know, they won't, you know, fingers are large pointing devices, right? And so if you're touching the screen, uh, you want the, 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 the surface area of the thing you're touching to be big enough and not too crammed together so you don't accidentally touch the wrong thing. So, this is a screenshot of the RD admin application, which is what you use to configure Rivendell. And you can see these are all the things that you can do. And it, you know, it's like a menu, but instead of instead of clicking something to expose the menu, it's just all right there. And you just touch a button to have it do what you want to do. So one of the first things you do is you set up your services. And a service is a a uh, continuous stream of audio. And so in the example, we have an FM and an HD2. So if you're um, fortunate enough to have a digital radio service with your radio station, you might have two streams of different audio. Um, HD1 typically follows the FM and then HD2 is often a separate, uh, a separate stream of audio. The other thing that Rivendell does is um, categorize its uh, content into groups. And so you touch manage groups to do that. And so here's uh, a screenshot, sorry for the eye chart, um, but basically each line it represents a group and a group is just a way to categorize your audio library. Um, and notice on the left, even though you may not be able to read the, the specific things, notice the colors. Rivendell makes extensive use of color so that you can very quickly, when you're glancing at a screen, you can very quickly get a sense for what you're looking at. And so by coloring the groups, um, you, can, you can have each one of them stand out. Um, oh yeah, carts. Does any, has anybody been around the radio business long enough to remember carts? Carts are these uh, things that look kind of like eight track tapes. That's that uh, thing on top of the machine there with the purple label. A cart holds a specific piece of audio and it might actually hold two or three pieces of audio. And every time you hit the play button on the cart machine, which that cart is sitting on top of it, it plays what's on it and it cues itself up to the next thing. Rivendell uses that idea in, um, in the computer to sort of mimic a cart. And so you can have carts that contain multiple cuts. Let's say you have an underwriter that has three different takes of their underwriting message, either different voices or slightly different wording or something like that. You can put those into a cart. And uh, so Rivendell um, takes the cart metaphor and uses it extensively inside, inside its uh, automation system. And in fact, in the library, you have things that it calls carts. So there's a little history for you. Um, Rivendell systems can run on multiple computers and in fact, often do. Um, what I'm gonna show you an, ex an, an example of here shows just one computer and we're just calling it QAZ, CAS. Um, but every 
workstation in your network participates with with it, whether you have two different players in two different studios or you have a production machine where you do all your traffic management, your underwriting and whatnot, or you upload um, new shows or new music. Lots of different computers can participate in one Rivendell setup. And so when you're configuring, you have to you have to tell Rivendell all these aspects of the these physical aspects and characteristics of these computers and how you want that computer to behave. And so you use this screen to tell it how how you want that thing that computer to participate in your Rivendell system. Rivendell also uses this concept of scheduler codes. And scheduler codes are very much like, uh, well, one way you can think of scheduler codes are is like um, genres in metadata. So you could have scheduler codes for blues or jazz or rock or whatever. But the nice thing about these scheduler codes is that it's kind of a blank slate and you can define any scheduler code to mean anything you want. And um, you could have, you know, you could have scheduler codes for news uh, or um, scheduler codes for music with male vocalists or female vocalists or instrumental or something like that. Um, the, the very interesting thing is that you can then use these scheduler codes to create rules when choosing content to play on your station. And these can, can take on any kind of meaning you want. And then you get to use those rules in several different ways. So, uh, scheduler codes are interesting and important aspects of, uh, Rivendell system. So we've got all that. That's the administrative side, real brief whirlwind tour of the administrative side. Then we have the Rivendell library. So we've got an app called RD Library that manages the, the content, both audio and program elements of your, your station. And when you get a brand new Rivendell system, this is what the library looks like. You get a cart with a test tone in it. So all you get to do is test that your audio is working when you have it set up. When you're done, what you're gonna end up with is another one of these eye charts, and you're gonna end up with literally thousands of audio tracks in your library. And each of these audio tracks has its own characteristics. And uh, you know it can be a little daunting to get your, your Rivendell system um, populated with audio, but there are lots of automated ways to do that. And um, you know, we can go into some of, some of those if you have any specific questions about those. Um, here's a, a screen showing the various aspects of one specific piece of audio. So this is a music track. Uh, it happens to be by Jack White from the album Blunderbuss. And you can see we've got, well, you maybe can't see, but we have the, the record label filled out. It's Columbia Records. So when it comes time to report uh, for streaming, um, you know, Rivendell can generate the, the reports for sound exchange pretty easily. Um, and in the bottom half of this view, we see the cut list. And in this case, this track has one cut. It is the, the song. It's the audio representing that song. Um, any questions about the library? I can't see all of you, so if you if you have a question, just go ahead and speak up, unmute, and go ahead and shout. Yeah, I got. This is Tim from KG. I've got a quick question about the library. Can Rivendell interface with external libraries, or does your library need to be imported into Rivendell? Yeah. Um, Rivendell wants to own all of its audio assets. And so if you have another library, you'll need to import it into Rivendell. Um, yeah, and as I said, there are ways to automate this and you can do batch imports and um, uh, there's lots of different ways to get audio from external libraries into Rivendell's library. But yeah, and and actually a um, little more, uh, a little bit of a nerd deep dive. When you import an audio track into Rivendell from some other location, it actually um, it transcodes it and it 
double samples it so that it tries to, let's say you have a, a, a 128k bit MP3 file, which is reasonable quality. Um, some of the audio files in the crowd will say, oh, I can, I can, I hate the sound of 128k bit MP3s. They sound terrible. But for most FM listeners, you can't really tell the difference between uh, that level of MP3 and uh, like a CD um, CD audio. But Rivendell does its best to sort of double transcode that that 128k bit MP3, and it converts it into a wave file. That's uh, Rivendell's internal storage format. It's wave. Does that help, Tim? Yes, it does. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Um, RD catch is Rivendell's timed uh, task manager. And with RD catch, you can record audio and um, get it right into Rivendell. You can play from um, RD catch. So if you have a, a show that has to start at uh, you know at a specific time, um, you can play right from RD catch. Uh, you can also download things from the internet, uh, and Rivendell supports downloading over HTTP from a website. It supports downloading uh, via FTP. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, protocols that Rivendell supports for downloading audio. You can also upload. Uploading is specifically um, regarding podcasts. Rivendell has uh, an inbuilt uh, ability to convert shows into podcasts. And then you can use this RD Catch task manager to uh, upload those to a podcast distribution site. Um, and then um, you can also use uh, RD Catch for switching things. So as I said before, if you want to switch from Studio A to satellite, for example, or from Studio A to Studio B at a specific time, this is where you would do that. So that's the the task scheduler. So those are sort of the um, the nuts and bolts of getting Rivendell to work. What I'm going to cover next is um, uh, generating playlists, which is a pretty huge component of Rivendell. Um, and again, Rivendell refers to playlists as logs, and so I'll probably bounce back and forth between those terms. Um, when you set up a Rivendell system, there are two units of time that are um, significant to Rivendell. The first of those is um, the uh, it, the first of those is a week. Um, I apologize for skipping through some of those. I'll I'll get back to those in a second after I talk about the week. So Rivendell programs um, one day at a time. And you can program up to seven days in advance. And, and so basically what your broadcast week looks like is this. It's a grid of 168 squares. And each of those squares represents an hour of the week. So in the upper left, you have Monday at midnight. and the lower right, you have Sunday at 11 p.m. So each of those colored squares represents an hour of time. So we have... Um, we have actually three significant units of time in Rivendell. We have an hour, a day, and a week. And um, there are there are actually recent um, updates uh, to Rivendell that haven't quite been released yet that um, allow a little bit more freeform. But when you're using Rivendell to to generate your playlists and logs, um, th those are the significant times: hours, days, and weeks. Um, so what do these hours represent or what, what's inside one of these hours? Well, those are the clocks. A clock is a one hour unit of time. And here's what a clock looks like. In, in this case, this is a, a sample clock. We're just calling it the spoke wheel. Um, each of those slices, each of those pie slices represents some event something that Rivendell is doing, whether it's playing a song, 
whether it's playing uh, a news program or a weather forecast or a weather report uh, or a, a station ID or a promo or um, switching from Studio A to Studio B. One, some, some of those events get put into your clock and you build these one hour at a time. So a clock represents one hour of things that Rivendell does. Let's take a look at what the, these events are. Um, an event is, uh, let me get, the, get it up here. So here's where we have a list of events and each of these events essentially does one or more thing, does one thing or more than one thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a sort of another eye chart uh, in a, in a presentation, but basically on the left-hand side of the window, we have our list of audio elements. And on the right side, we have uh, the things that we want this event to do. And so we can, we can basically have an event be up to three distinct things in the white square box. Can you see my mouse moving? Um, uh. I don't see a mouse. You don't see a mouse? Okay, sorry. Well, in the right-hand side, oh, maybe on this page. Now do you see There it? we go. Yeah. Okay, so over here is your list of audio assets. Over here, we have what's called the pre-import section. And then here in this area, in the middle, we have the import section and then the post-import section. So we can do, each event could do up to three things. We could pre-import, import, and then post-import. What do these import and, and post-import and pre-import things mean? Well, um, I'll talk about importing first. Basically, when we're building a playlist, um, we can either um, import from a traffic management program or a music management program, or we can let Rivendell import or grab a track from its own library. Import is a bit of a misnomer here, but it's it's a general term that comes from working with external um, applications like traffic management or uh, music management. Um, so in the pre-import section, we could um, actually just play a cart, a specific cart every time. Same for the post. Um, we could play a specific cart Maybe we have uh, a generic um, station liner that we want to say, hey, you're, you're listening to WPVM and then have it go right into music. So you could put that liner here, grab a track of music, and then you're off and running. So events can get kind of complex, um, but what I like to do is keep each event pretty simple when we're setting up a new station. And um, and then it's really clear what it does. So we've got this event named um, music. And in this case, we're just going to grab a music track from the library and play and put it into the playlist. After we've created all of our events, put events into clocks and populated our clocks in the grid, then we can make logs. And again, logs, playlists, same thing. And so um, you use this dialog box, you click on generate logs or touch it if you're lucky enough to have a touch screen and you choose a date for the log and it will generate 24 hours worth of content. So again, there's a, a significant unit of time for Rivendell, 24 hours, one whole day. Um, and you can generate uh, playlists or logs up to a week in advance. And using RD Log Manager, um, this is also where you can generate reports of what was played. So that last... Um, grab my mouse again, this last menu item here, manage reports is where you generate, you know, what played when um, for proof of performance or, or uh, for reporting purposes. 
So now that we have our logs, what do we do with them? Well, RD Airplay is the playout uh, manager. And this is the screen that you most often see if you walk into a radio station that's running Rivendell, uh, especially if you go into a studio. This is, uh, you know, for a station that's running Rivendell, this screen is up on uh, a studio machine, a studio computer pretty much all the time, 24 seven, whether it's a live show with a, uh, a host in the station or not, they tend to leave these, uh, tend to leave these running. Um, what you see on the left-hand side here uh, are the upcoming tracks. So you see this upper one is the, the currently playing, in this case, nothing's playing, but if this was playing, this start button would turn red and you see the view meters bouncing, and then the next six tracks that are coming up. Um, and those are also highlighted in green over here on the right side. And um, and then you also see the rest of the day's log. Uh, this is a scrollable window, and it goes from midnight. Uh, if you can read that, this starts at midnight, and if you were to grab this and scroll it all the way down, it ends at 11.59, uh, 59 p.m. Um, so this is one entire day of programming. Um, and you can you can manipulate stuff. Like if you have a person in the studio that's using RD Airplay to play stuff out, that person can add, delete, and and move tracks around. So they're not um, they're not tied to what was previously generated by the log manager. Uh, they can they can move things around uh, so that, um, you know, it's it's fairly common for people to sit in the studio and use Rivendell as the player, you know, instead of turntables or CD players, if you've got your, if you've got your music library in Rivendell, then you can just use the Rivendell player to, uh, to play it out. And you can have it do things like, you know, play two or three songs. If you've got a music show, the, the host could have it play two or three or five songs or however many they want, and then stop and let the person to turn on the mic and talk. And then they can just hit the start button to resume. Um, and so it's it's really a, a good interactive tool. And in my experience, um, teaching show hosts, volunteer show hosts, how to use this is pretty easy. And in fact, this is probably the only Rivendell app that uh, show hosts would ever have to use. So you know, especially if you have a touch screen uh, connected to the Rivendell computer, you just you just touch the buttons that you want, and it's kind of like you're touching a physical device. Um, so it's uh, it's pretty intuitive, and people pick it up really quickly. A question for you, David. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is silly or not, but if 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 someone has a radio show uh, where they have play music and mm -hmm. So they, you said they do the part where they're talking. Mm -hmm. Does that show up in the lineup? Does it say person talking or um, does it just not show anything? It absolutely can. If you want to construct your log so that it includes little notes yeah. like that uh, mm -hmm. to indicate where the person should talk, you can totally do that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. And you would also. Uh, you know, have it automatically stop before that, you know, you would have it stop playing um, so that it doesn't just play everything right on through. So where you put those notes indicating where the person should talk or could talk, um, you could have that, have Rivendell uh, stop the player and wait for the person to hit the start button again. I see. Okay. And and if if it's a pre-recorded show, does that show up as each individual song or does that sh just show up as a show that it typically show just shows up as one, one hour long or two hour long um, show. Yeah. It shows up as its own individual cart in the lineup. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now that's a good question though. One, one, that's, that's one way to do it. The other way is as you suggested, um, have the person, I mean, they don't have to be sitting in the studio um, to do a live show. Uh, has have people heard the term voice track? 
Is yeah. that a, a term people have, have are, are familiar with? Yeah. So you can use Rivendell to voice track. And basically all that means is that you record your breaks in between in between songs. Um, you know, as as soon as maybe five minutes before they go, before you play, or even a minute before it goes on the air. So you could be sitting in your home studio and you could record, you know, you'd, you'd get a copy of the log or the playlist for that day showing where the, the vo voice breaks are, um, the, the DJ show breaks are, and a person could just record that minute or two or three minute long break and then insert it into the Rivendell library. Rivendell has really good features for, for doing voice tracking. Um, mm, okay. so, yeah. And then each track shows up as its own individual track. You don't get the whole show showing up as one, one uh, cart. Okay. So, got it. So, yeah. You, okay. So, that's... um, I, sorry. Yeah, David, go ahead, Rose. This is Rose. Um, yeah. So does that mean that someone doing a live show from home could decide when to put their, their voice in uh, on the fly? I mean, that wouldn't have to be pre-programmed. Is that possible? Yes. yes. And how would that work, though? I, I mean, I'm practically speaking, I just I'm not quite getting it. Sure. Um, I'm actually working with Tom to uh, to work out the details. Tom and uh, Doug. Uh, I've mm -hmm. had some conversations with them, uh, working out the details of, of how to do this. But basically. Um, you need to have um, some kind of remote access to the Rivendell computer over the internet. And a very common technique for doing that is VNC. Um, maybe folks have heard about that. And it's, it's, a, it's a pretty common remote access tool. Um, other commercial versions of that are things like TeamViewer or AnyDesk, where you have access to the remote computer and you can manipulate that computer. Um, the trick with Rivendell is to be able to get your audio from your home PC onto the, uh, the Rivendell computer in the studio. And, and the fortunate and unfortunate, the blessing and the curse is that there are many ways to do that. And so what you have to do is decide on the way you want to do it and and then, you know, set up your studio so that it works that way. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that answers your question, Rose, but um, it's it, the, the, the um, yeah, the, the simple answer is that it's kind of like what lawyers say. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they, remote access would be crucial. Sure. Station right now because um, ours uh, we we're not currently doing any live shows. Um, everything is pre-recorded, and it's all scheduled by people who are working from home. I mean, sure. ever since the pandemic started, especially. Yep. At some point, we'll be phasing that out, I guess. But um, right now, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. Davine, I see your uh, chat message. Can voice tracking be done instantly? Um, it's, I'm not sure what you mean by instantly, but it, it can be done. Um, you, can, you can insert your voice tracks up to, you know, basically a few seconds before uh, they go on the air. Let's, let's say 30 seconds just to be practical. So it, it it's, it's more or less real time. You can you can definitely do it quickly. Is that what you mean by instantly? I think so because uh, we want to in initiate this for someone to come in do a traffic and a weather report. Yeah, like on Democracy Now, when they have their like half minutes uh, long uh, music breaks. Yep. And we want him to be able to come in and just do a quick traffic and weather report. Sure. 
and uh, and and have it all happen in that in that break time that democracy now does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The simple answer is yes, you can do it like that. You know, you'd okay. you'd you'd want to wait until the, the last possible few seconds because you want your traffic report to be pretty current. Right. 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 Um, yeah. You can totally do that. Um, um I, that's it for my prepared presentation um there's obviously or maybe not obviously but there is a lot more to rivendell than just these things um i just wanted to give sort of a brief overview and give you a feel for um how you would go about using it um i think the last time i did this i pulled up a live Rivendell system and um, that people were asking questions about this, that, and the other thing. And I mean, if somebody wants to see, I, I haven't really prepared much for this, but if somebody wants to see a live Rivendell system, I could show one. Does anyone, uh, do you guys have time to do that or interested to do a, a live interaction? I think that'd be good to see. Okay. Okay. Let's go for it. And then, you know, if someone has to leave early, that's fine. Sure. Dave, I got a couple, a couple quick questions as you're firing up the system there. Sure. Um, I mean, I think this is probably the case with, with most stations as well, but I know in our case, <laughs> um, you know, certainly having the automation there is important to us at KGN. We never had any sort of automation until the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. um, right? I mean, our automation was people twenty four seven in the studios to push the necessary. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As it should be, right? It's a radio right. station. <laughs> um, but obviously, with the pandemic, you know that changed the dynamic a lot. Now we're just trying to build off of that, and so we need some automation there and backup systems, backup audio, et cetera, et cetera. People can't show up or this or that or the other you know, the dynamics that you start <clears throat> to be challenged with as you're getting people back in the building or couldn't have people here. And then we've got studios in a couple cities. Sure. Right? So there's interconnection as far as that goes. And so that's mm -hmm. been a challenge with other automation systems is um, redundancy, uh, stability, being able to fire and see copies of whatever's on your <clears throat> automation system or your carts from multiple facilities. Um, and now we're looking at a a live wire, an Axia system, digital mm -hmm. upgrade. Um, but there's very much this common flow between what's automated, like syndicated programming and whatnot. And now we've automated more sort of top of the hour things, underwriting things, et cetera, et cetera, mixed with that live in-studio person, be that a news host or a, um, uh, a music host. And so how seamless is... Rivendell when it comes to, um, well, one, having the simplest <laughs> user-facing interface in front of them, um, because when it's all volunteer-based, it's very difficult to get everybody up to speed with a complex system. And so sure. the easier, the better. Um, and as much as we can run in the background without interfering, the better, um, while not cutting into their creative expression. Right? Yeah, yeah. So how um, do you see Rivendell being for that type of an environment, which may be the case with other stations as well? Yeah, but right. That's a complex system, right? Well, as I as I mentioned, um, the the player interface is super easy to use, and um, I, my experience has been bringing it in. You know, I, I've I've worked with uh, a fair number of community radio stations where the volunteer base tends to skew a little bit older and more, um, I don't know, computer averse or just less experienced with computers. And it seems to be a pretty natural, pretty intuitive thing because people pick it up pretty quickly. Um, now combine that with, um, you know, doing an interactive show, interactive meaning, um, you know, opening the mic and talking and then playing a few tracks, um, you know, so interacting with Rivendell and also interacting, you know, with the audience doing your regular show. In other words, 
replacing the turntables, cart machines, and uh, CD machines, and even cassette players, you know, replacing that with a single point of contact, a single interface. Um, it seems like people prick it, pick it up quite quite quickly and uh, don't have, you know, as long as they're not so uh, afraid of computers that they just sort of freak out every time they get near one, um, which I have seen. Um, the other thing is that Rivendell is um, pretty well integrated specifically with Axia. For those of you who don't know, Axia is one of these uh, audio over IP. It's an entirely digital audio system, uh, mixing board and audio routing and all that stuff for radio stations. Um, there is a live wire driver for Rivendell that turns your Rivendell machine into a node on your Axia network. Um, but even without that, you can um, use Rivendell to control the Axia network. You don't have to have the audio driver. Um, so even better integration if, if you're running a live wire system. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to sort of explain how you interact with it without showing. Um, I'm having trouble stopping the share Stephanie, can you just like break that it off? It looks like me? you're 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 back. I don't see a share anymore, so I think you're just back. Oh, well, it's I've still got the stop share button. I might have to disconnect and reconnect. Or maybe I can just do a new share. Let me try that first. Okay. So, yeah, let me connect to a remote Rivendell computer. Last time uh we were here, we used um James Costello's station. And I think I'll do that again, even though he's not with us this time. <laughs> um, let me see if I can get connected to it. Uh, I hear a train coming, so I may have to get up and close my window because I'm about half a block from a railroad track here and oh, I right might on. get loud. Yeah. All right, new share. Yeah, it's working. Wow. It says paused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's weird. That's great. All right. So what we have here, it, this looks a little bit different than what I was showing because um, I've, so this is um, KCBP in Modesto, California, um, and they run 100% automated. So um, I'm not going to be able to show good interaction with uh with like how you would use it um as a, a show host you know using it interactively but i maybe i can give you some idea of it um so what we have uh as i mentioned before we have you know what's currently playing so if i click this red stop button i'll stop this i'll stop the station um and then we have the next six upcoming tracks right here. You can see my mouse. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then over here we have the whole day's uh, programming. So you can scroll all the way to the top and here is what played at midnight. Actually, it started a minute and 14 seconds past midnight. Um, and, and that is because what was playing the night before or at 1159, whatever, it rolled over the top of the hour, and then we played this top of the hour legal ID um, as the next thing or the first thing in the new broadcast day. So um, before a log plays, you can see what time, approximately what time it's going to play that thing. But then after it's played, you see exactly what time it did play. You notice that that display just jumped forward. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason it jumped was that it switched tracks. So we were playing. Um, this in the mix right here. And then we segued into uh, the golden rule is still cool. So you can see we have a countdown timer for that. Uh, I'm sorry, a count up timer from the beginning. And at the far end, we see a countdown timer. So we see we're 33 seconds 
into it and we have another three minutes 30 35 seconds to go for this specific track a um, couple other things this is just an hour selector so it allows us to jump this view uh to the top of the the, the hour that we want to go to it's just a navigation tool for quickly scrolling this window you don't have to use it you can just use the scroll bar over here um let's see what else oh uh with this station in order to keep their their clocks on time they have they have two logs they play the main playlist and then they have a playlist that we set up that at uh 8 seconds before the top of each hour we fade down whatever is playing uh with the assumption that it's a music track we fade it down and then we play the top of the the hour legal id and so this is a way they've chosen to keep the station on time um there's like i said it's it's 100 automated and so there's nobody sitting in the studio yet they have plans to do that like some of you folks um but uh, this is how they keep their hours on time. So they use this secondary log to, or the secondary playlist to fade things down and then uh, play the legal ID at the top of the next hour. Uh, this window over here is uh, an app that they use for feeding their stream. So the audio, uh, I don't know if I can show the audio routing here. Inside this computer, do we have this? Yeah, inside this computer, we have Rivendell, and Rivendell has multiple playout channels available. Um, and so the main playout channel, zero left and right, uh, is their main output. And they send they send it to this glass app, and they also send it to their Focusrite Scarlet USB audio device, and that is hooked up to their transmitter. Um, so you can have multiple destinations for stuff. So we have the main playout goes to the stream and the transmitter, and then they have this secondary channel that goes to the onboard audio devices which is just a little speaker in the computer it's for like previewing things you could have this hooked up this second channel hooked up to your board in your q channel for example so you could you know play uh rivendell has the ability to um you know preview things so the person on the air can listen to something like queuing up a record in the old days um you could you could listen to it in queue um and not have it go out over the air so that's what the audio routing inside the computer looks like. Again, ask questions as I'm going through this. Feel free to interrupt. I'm going to keep asking questions. Uh, so yeah. I assume you can have multiple playlists. Um, they go out to multiple channels as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep, absolutely. And is there a um, limit on that? I mean, can you run four stations off of a single? Yeah. Yes. Um, technically, Rivendell only wants to run one instance of this RD AirPlay app on on any given computer, um, and so you the the uh, what you need to do um, is have uh, an individual computer for each playout. Uh, there are ways around that, but the the simple answer to your question is yeah you can run as many stations as you want um off of off of one rivendell system i mean there are places that run entire networks of uh of stations off of you know a single instance of rivendell wonderful there's a a recent feature that's, that's been added uh called a virtual playout system which is basically headless it doesn't have any of this it doesn't have a, a graphical user interface it's just a, a background player and so for for stations that are literally 100 percent automated you could actually use that you don't get the vu meters for for positive visual feedback 
Um, but uh, there's other ways to implement VU meters so you can see that it's actually actually playing at any given time. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. So using the RD admin command, don't look at my password, please. Um, so again, this is a, a system with one computer uh, doing all of its doing doing everything production and um, and play out. But we have um, these virtual logs, and so we have um, these virtual log machines. We have three main log playouts. We have main auxiliary one, which we're using for that fader, and then an unused one, which we can use if we need to. But then we also have these virtual logs and we can have 20 of those. Um, and these can all be running on one computer. So um, if you if you wanna run uh, you know, four different stations off of one computer, you could actually do it using these virtual players um, of, that, that are here. These uh, again are um, they're headless, and so you don't get the benefits of having all the you know the graphical feedback things and, and control. You basically control them using uh, what Rivendell calls our macros. They're little programming elements, kind of like macros in a spreadsheet or a, or a Word document, something like that. I don't want to. I don't want to interfere with James' system here too much. Uh, I'll give you a, a view of a... Can you folks see this pretty well? I think I might be able to uh, zoom in a little bit if you're having trouble seeing it. Can you hear the train coming by? No. No, it's pretty quiet, actually. Oh, okay. It'll get louder in a second. Okay. <laughs> Oh, interesting. I'm going the wrong yes. way there. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I guess I can't make it any bigger. Huh. <clears throat> the library. That's what I wanted to show. So here's a, a fully populated library. And again, I apologize for the, the eye chart, <clears throat> but um, what we, so you can, you can affect the display of the library by choosing a group. So let's choose the music category. Um, and we're going to count all the, so he's, uh, KCBP has a fairly small library. Um, I work with stations that have 20 or 40,000 music carts in their library. Here we only have uh, 1,100 and so, um, but, um, you know, one of the, uh, one of the, the aspects, the creative aspects of radio from the days of old, I worked in, is it getting loud? Um, I, I worked in commercial no, okay. radio back in the days of records, and we actually played LPs. And one of the sort of um, kind of competitive aspects of it was how good can your segues be? And with an automation system, you can make your segues perfect every time. And you do that in Rivendell. by setting these segue markers. So instead of like many automation systems try to intelligently crossfade between tracks with Rivendell, you as the library manager uh, get to, oh, there's James calling me. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Um, he probably wants to use it, so I should probably get out of his way. Anyway, um, 
you set these segue markers and uh, then your, your crossfades between songs are perfect every time. I'm going to disconnect from this so that James can use it. I assume he may want to get in here. Um, if we need to, we can get on another system. I am going to disconnect and stop sharing. So Did it actually an stop? Ideal, what's an ideal crossfade? Yeah, that's a great question. To me, if you have a song that ends cold, like it, uh, you know, there's a, a drum beat at the end, or, you know, somebody plays a power chord at the end of a song. Uh, the ideal crossfade is that next song starts while the, while the echo or the reverb of the, the drum beat or the, 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 you know, the chord is still, you know, fading out. It's just milliseconds. Or if you have a song that fades out, you have the next track start at just the right time uh, in the fade. So to me, it's it's entirely subjective, right? Um, but uh, you kind of know a good crossfade when you hear it. And <coughs> you definitely have to listen to the song that you're placing that segue marker in. And Rivendell gives you the ability to listen to that uh, so that you can preview it and you know exactly where it is. And what I've found in running a couple stations um, I'm, I'm sort of continually going back and tweaking those segue markers because I'll hear a crossfade. I'll, I'll hear a segue between two tracks and it's not quite right. And I want to adjust it by a couple milliseconds one way or another. So it, yeah, the, the answer to your question, Davine, is that it, it's really a personal thing, but, um, so it depends. It really depends on on the song for sure, mm -hmm. but it also depends on it. It also depends on what you want your station to sound like. Do you want tight segues between all the songs, or do you want a you know a classical station? They would you would never segue, you would never crossfade between tracks of classical music. You always you know let a song finish, and usually the classical stations will uh, allow a brief pause, and then they'll start the next track. Or they'll, you know, they'll talk after every track. You know, it again, it depends on how you want your station to sound. Um, those are sort of the the finer details of tuning an automation system. When you're at that point, you're in a good you're in a good place because you're you're attending to the minutia of of the automation system, in my opinion. Look at that. We're already past an hour. Yeah, you filled that up. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions anybody has? Well, yeah, I have some questions. I don't know if you want to carry on much past the hour. I can ask Dave uh, offline, but um, what do we say? I have time. Okay. Uh, yeah, first one is you talked about keeping the station on time. Uh, our system uh, we use that uh, sets up blocks of time that you schedule. And mm -hmm. if you don't schedule enough within that block, there'll they'll be silence mm -hmm. at the end. And if mm -hmm. you over schedule it, it'll, it'll truncate. So how, how is this different? Is, how, how do you, in, in that kind of model, how, how would we keep it on time yeah there's there's a couple of different ways you can do it with rivendell uh you could do it like uh KB, kcbp does it you could you know you can have it fade things um there's also a mechanism inside rivendell so uh when it's putting a, a log or a playlist together it can um you can have it auto fill it's it's kind of a complex complicated process, but basically you tell Rivendell um, that you have a bunch of shorter tracks, you know, anywhere from thirty seconds to maybe ninety seconds, and you sort of set those tracks aside as your fill group. And um, when Rivendell is putting the log together for a day, when it gets to the end of an hour, you you set it up so that it. Uh, you know, it chooses shorter tracks and, mm -hmm. um, 
and then without fading the last track before the top of the hour, you can have it time things out fairly closely. It depends partly on how precise you want it to be. Like if you want your hours to start exactly to the second, then uh, it takes a bit of work to, to do it. I mean, unless you want to go ahead and do some of the fading like like we did with KBCS, KCBP, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there, there's a there's a bunch of different ways that you can handle that. Um, yeah. But um, it it really depends on how you want your station to sound. Yeah, we don't, we don't automate the the scheduling. We have you know the people who have a you know a block of time assigned to them, and they'll you know put in the the uh, tracks that will play during mm -hmm. that block mm -hmm. of time. And and that block of time is defined, you know, as usually an hour or a half hour. And sure. So that that keeps the station on time automatically. You don't have to worry about, you know, time drifting, because Got that it. block right. is that block. So yep, yep. I'm just trying to understand how Riv Rivendell deals with that particular, you know, kind of way of doing things. Well, are you proposing that that uh, individuals continue choosing? the the tracks or are you do you, are yeah. you saying that you want Rivendell to take that no that no task? I, I continue in, individuals doing that I'm just got it want to be clear on how you know it the system we use you know there's not an issue with keeping on time because sure. you're defined those time blocks and it just you know if if something's scheduled to play during that time it plays if it's not it's just silence but it saves on time. Yeah, but you'd like to avoid those silent periods, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be just a screw up, basically. But I'm just saying that you know, no, there's no way you can get the station to be not on time because it automatically schedules those blocks. Right. The system that we use right now is airtime, which is very aggravating in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing it does is it keeps us on time to the microsecond. So that's nice. Yeah. And it also allows schedulers to um, do all their work from home remotely. I guess it's a, a web-based platform. Yeah, right. That mm -hmm. That's one area that Rivendell is, is lagging behind other systems. It's not web-based and um, it has uh, it has a web-based API, but there are very few components that are written to use that web-based API. Okay, I got another question. Uh, this easy answer, I'm sure. Um, does um, Rivendell have a, well, the system we use, it, it applies replay gain to each of the tracks so that the, the loudness is uniform. Does uh, Rivendell have a similar methodology there um no rivendell does not oh rivendell does not have or use the replay gain that's embedded in for example mp3 files mm -hmm. uh, rivendell expects that the audio you are importing into your library is at the level you want it to be mm -hmm. uh so okay. You really need to pre-process it. Uh, the, the philosophy of Fred Gleason, the the original author of Rivendell, is that the playout system isn't the place to adjust levels. The playout mm -hmm. system plays whatever you give it at whatever level it is at. So if you you mm -hmm. need to you need to um, normalize uh, your audio before you bring it into Rivendell. It can do mm -hmm. a little bit of that during the import. But um, um, it it's a very specific normalization algorithm that Rivendell uses during the import. Hmm. Okay. All right. And let's see. Third question: uh, how can, If multiple users are want to access the system remotely at the same time, is that an issue, or how does that happen? Yeah, uh, Rivendell is meant to be used by multiple users at the same time, and it takes care of if if there's a resource that um, needs to be locked 
by a user in order mm -hmm. to prevent accidental uh, you know, conflicts in, in writing, it will lock those resources. So for example, if somebody is editing a log or a playlist, um, other people can only view that while that person has it open for editing. So mm. it, it's, um, you know, multiple people obviously can open things for viewing, but only one person can edit something at any given time. So we conceivably, probably in, act, in reality, have more than one person scheduling shows at the same time. So would that be a problem with Rivendell? Um, yeah, you might have to, they may have to coordinate their access to the, to okay. the database. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I think that's all I have. Great. Others. I see people are starting to drop off. <laughs> I, for some reason, I can't see anyone. My, oh, really? my, my zoom huh. interface is stuck on sharing, even though I'm not. anymore. <laughs> We can that's see weird. you. Well, that's a first. <laughs> well, everything showed up, so, and we can see you. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did anyone else have any other questions before we go? It's just a lot of information to process. Yeah, it really is. I, mm -hmm. I totally understand that. Well, we're recording it, so we'll put it up on our website if you need to look at it again. Um, and uh, and and that uh, that brings me back to uh, this is a double thank you to David because he already did this presentation a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. we had a technological glitch so the recording went bleh and so thank you again for for doing this it means a lot and that was a wonderful presentation it was really well, just well done thank you yeah the first one was just practice this one <laughs> uh, you just te you teed teed up yourself. Edges. <laughs> so the first one is not available for viewing anymore? No, correct. That's right. It never made it up there. Um, okay. But this one will. Um, you see it's recording. So, And my, my computer hasn't had any issues freezing, so it should be awesome. Fine. Yeah, I'll have it so, up tomorrow. I have a question for, the, for who's here. I, you know, I think um, the pandemic really pushed or, or accelerated both the use of recording at home and also using uh, platforms like Zoom. And I don't think we're gonna get the people in the studio like we used to have. Um, and uh, because it's so much more convenient to not have to drive into the city and park and have other people show up at the same time, I'm wondering if we're alone in that, or is that something that other stations are experiencing also? We've had the same experience. Uh, you know, we, and during the pandemic, we've recorded virtually all, all of our shows remotely mm -hmm. and uh, worked pretty hard at maintaining uh, the, you know, the audio quality and things like that and been pretty successful. And so mm -hmm. there's, Maybe a bit of reluctance to, like you said, to go to the trouble of going to the studio and to if at night you got to unlock doors and walk, walk down a creepy hallway and things like that. And, you know, working from home has its advantages. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're the opposite. We're mostly automated. We don't have that many live uh, local shows but our people are anxious to get back into the studio and we have we have a serious parking issue with where our studio is located yeah we don't have the parking issue now because they don't have to come park <laughs> yeah i've i've the stations that I work with are a real mixed bag. Um, KFAI in Minneapolis and WORT here in Madison uh, hosts are back at the station for the most part. It, you don't like the the policy for the for the both of those stations is if you're not comfortable, you can do your show remotely. But most, I'd say, eighty percent of the, the show hosts are back at, in the studio live for their shows. Hmm. 
I'm guessing if we switch to more live programming, that people would want to be in the studio. Yeah, I, I think nothing can substitute for, for being in the studio for a live show. Mm -hmm. It's just for pre-recorded shows. It seems like why better? Because if you can do it at home, uh, sitting in your pajamas, then <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we use, we use a, a remote recording system that includes video. So, you know, people hmm. can see each other and, you know, it's maybe not as good as being face to face in reality, but it works pretty well. You know, we're using the Zoom platform and we have uh, one person and we use feed phone to go live and and um, I think we can take calls remotely, but I'm actually not sure of that right now. But I've had a lot of problems with the Zoom. Yeah, the Zoom doesn't get good audio. Uh, we've worked around that by having the the, the people you know, start their uh, their voice recorder on their computers and record locally, and then you you send the files to whoever's editing the show and sync them up and get really good audio that way. Mm. It uses are you using, track, so it's not as good. Are you using Audacity? Yeah, I'm using Audacity. Recording? Uh -huh. So you're recording well, the audio live on Audacity? Well, well, actually, uh, use the uh, voice re on the Windows, I think it's called Voice Recorder, and another one of the people has Mac, and I don't know what the voice recorder app is on that, but you just turn that on and it records their voice and then, you know, send it to the editor and it gets put together and works out really well. Ah, well, I've been using, when I use Zoom, I do uh, separate tracks. Mm -hmm. So that's helped a little bit, but. Um... Yeah, yeah, the Zoom compresses and does noise cancellation and all that stuff and makes mm -hmm. makes for audio you know artifacts that don't sound very good yeah there's a lot of sound distortion with zoom yeah but besides that you know it's missing the excitement of being live on the air yeah totally. and that's what people want to be in the studio to do mm -hmm. we were able to go live with fiend phone Phone calls, you mean? Uh, yeah, and also um, remotely being live. What was the it's name? With of the, it's with the Fiend Phone platform. Hmm. I haven't hmm. heard of that one. Uh, our chief engineer found that. Oh, How is that spelled, Murray? F W -E E N P H O N E. Okay, great, thank you. Well, I see we're coming up on 4.30. Um, I wanna thank everyone for coming today. It was just really nice being with you and just a really nice conversation, thank you. And, uh, and thank you again to David for taking the time to be with us. And um, I know David's always, well, I shouldn't offer you, but I know you're always really make yourself available if anyone has questions and stuff like that. So, yeah, totally. Um, uh, and uh, I think that's it. <laughs> okay. And Thanks everyone, for the great questions, everyone. Yes. Thank you. And everyone have a great day and um, go out and vote, eh? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you both for putting this together. Yeah, you bet. Have yeah, a good thank Thursday. You. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you. Bye. Dinner. Take care. Stay safe. Stay, Stay safe. safe.